This is Access 2016, Module 2, Part 1. In this module, we're going to begin by creating tables in Design View. Then we're going to look at several ways of importing data in. And finally, we're going to look at how to set up relationships between the tables. So let's take a look at the first part where we're going to be designing a table in Design View. So let's get started. You should have the Access Database called River View that we created in Module 1. You should, at the very least, have the visit table. You must have this table so that you have the data. So you should have at least comp completed part one and part two. So that you created the table with the five fields, added some records, and then added the rest in part two using the copying and paste. I'm going to close that object. I tend to work best with a clean work area. So what I do is when I'm not using an object, I close the object using the bottom X that would be here so that I don't have a lot of objects open at once. Sometimes if you leave these objects open, it can lead to error messages when you try to do certain things. So it's a good idea to close the objects when you're finished working with them. We're going to start out today on our Create tab. And we're going to be creating a table. Now, if we were creating a table in Datasheet view, which is what we did the last time, if you click this table option, the first one, it opens it up and looks very much like what we started with when we created from a blank table, or excuse me, a blank database. If you choose table design, this next button, button which is what we're going to use today, we're going to click on that it opens up into design view. It does not look the same. In, in design view, you do not see any of the data that is in that table. You only see the fields and how they are set up. Those are the only two views that we have to work with on tables. Data sheet view, which we worked with in module one, where you see all of the data. And then now we're going to start working in design view. So we're going to start out with our first field. It's going to be called invoice num. And it is a short text field. So I'm going to go over to the data type. You get a drop-down list here of all of the options. We're going to choose short text. And then we can tab over and we can type a description. Now notice up above that this is optional. And if I type in here primary key, that is just telling other users that that is the primary key. This does not establish it as the primary key yet. We have to do something a little later that will take care of that for us. But Access does not know that this is the primary key just because we typed it in there. Now we can go down to the bottom of our screen. And some people have a, like to use the shortcut key. You can if you want to, and it's described in the text. I usually just click down in the bottom. 
we're going to change that field size to 5. Then we're going to come down here to the caption and we're going to put in invoice space num. Now what's going to happen in a little bit is when we start entering data, if we go to data sheet view and we look at our data, the caption information is what's going to be displayed as the column heading instead of the field name. So if we want it to read something different than the field name, and in this case we wanted to add the space between words to make it more readable, you would put that information in the caption. You want to be very careful here with typing on both field names and captions on your homework. Another thing to point out is every short text field you have defaults to the 255 characters that we just changed it from. So if your invoice number is really only five characters and you don't change the field size, you're adding 250 blanks to that field for every invoice you have. So you would be storing a lot of wasted space as blank inform or blank as blanks. So you always want to make sure you adjust that field size. All right, the next field we're going to add is the visit ID. So we're going to come back up to the top. And we're going to start typing visit ID. You're going to notice that it doesn't fill in anything in the bottom until you pick the data type. If we say this is going to be short text, now it has filled in all the fields at the bottom that pertain to the short text. So we're going to call this a foreign key. Now what a foreign key is, is this is a field that is going to be used to link to another table and this field is the primary key in the other table. So the primary key, if you remember, has to be unique and there, so there can only be one record with that invoice number. The visit ID is unique in the visit table and it is the primary key in that table. We're going to use this field in our new table to connect or link to our visit table. We're going to come down and change the visit ID to a length of 4. And we're going to type in the caption and add that space. So we're going to say visit space ID. Now we're going to come up to our next field and we're going to say this is the invoice AMT and this is a field type of currency. So if you type the first letter of a field type it will go to the first field type that begins with that. So currency if you typed a C would take you down there. You could also simply click the drop down arrow and choose it that way. Notice when I change the fields type, the information that got populated down here in my field properties changed to match the field type. Okay, so we do not have a description. And we're going to come down here and we're going to say, I want the format to be currency. Notice you can specify number formatting. You can also specify the number of decimal places. 
If you leave it auto, if you have two zeros after the decimal, it will not show both of those zeros. If you always want it to be two places after the decimal, you need to specify two. And then we're going to come down to the caption and we're going to add our space. So it reads invoice space AMT. The next field name we're going to add is the invoice date. And this is going to be a field type of date and time. Then again, you can see that those options changed for our field properties. So we're going to come down here and we're going to look at the formatting. So you can see there are several options for formatting. The thing I don't like about the descriptions they put next to them is that, for example, if you look at short date, it's using an example that has a two-digit month and a two-digit date, as well as a four-digit year. What's deceiving about that is if you had a one-digit month or a one-digit date, such as January 1st, it would not display it as 01 slash 01. It would display it as 1 slash 1. So it would drop the leading zeros. So if I wanted it to always display as a two-digit month, a two-digit date, and a four-digit year, None of these predefined options will do that. You have to specify your own. So we're going to specify MM and the chart describing these custom date formats is on page access 65. MM does a two digit month for numerics. Some of the other codes that are available to you will actually give you typed out abbreviations. Then we're going to do slash and do DD to get a two digit day. Slash YYYY to get a four digit year. And then you're going to hit tab. You're going to come down to the caption field and you're going to type in the space. So we're going to say invoice date. And then we are ready to enter another field. So we're going to get back up to the top and it's going to say invoice paid. This is going to be a yes or no field. And then we're going to come down to find the caption and we're going to say invoice space paid. Now the last thing we have to do is we have to actually specify which field is the primary key. Otherwise, Access does not know. So what you want to do is you want to click next to the invoice number field so that the entire row is highlighted. Then come up and locate the primary key button. It looks like a key. When you click on that, you will get a visual picture next to invoice number specifying this as the key. Until you see that key there, this is not the primary key according to access. And even though it says it, 
over here. Notice when I changed it to say it is the primary key, it now says it is required and it has to be unique. Let's go ahead and save our table. So I'm going to click the Save button. Notice Table 1 doesn't appear down here on our object pane until we save it. We're going to click Save and we're going to call this Billing. So now we have two field or excuse me, tables available to us. So let's look at how we can make changes to our design. So we're going to start out by trying to make, move some fields. So if I decided that I want the fields in a different order, I want invoice number, visit, invoice date, then invoice amount. So what you're going to do is you're going to select invoice date, you highlight it once, then click on it a second time and hold the mouse down. You see the dark line, you're going to then move that up above invoice amount, and release the mouse and it will reorder those fields. Now what if I decided I needed to add another field? So between invoice amount and invoice paid I've decided I need another field called invoice item. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the field that you want it to be above. You'll notice I'm clicking on the gray area here. I'm not clicking on the description. I'm clicking over here where I get the arrow. It highlights the entire row. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose insert a row. Notice you can also delete a row. So we're going to add another field. This one is called Invoice Item. It's going to be a short text and it's going to have a length of 40. We want to enter the caption with the space. And now we've finished making changes to our table. So we're going to go ahead and save those changes and close our table. Now let's take a look at our visit table. Well first let's open billing. Notice when I open billing the captions are what is displayed as my column headings. You can tell that because it has the spaces. When I open my visit table, you'll notice it's still the field names. So now I want to switch to design view and make some changes there. Right? There's two ways to get to design view. I can switch to the design view using the view button or if I'm opening a table, I can right click and choose Design View and then it will open directly into that. So we're going to finish modifying our next table in the next segment of this video.